Hello everyone, welcome to my talk, What Pleasure? Hardware-based fault injection attacks against Intel SCX enclaves using the SVID voltage scaling interface. I am Zitai Chen and from University of Birmingham. Before I talk about undervolting, let's talk about what is SJX. Using SJX, developers can create a trusted execution environment that protects their data and code from tampering. And you may wonder what's the threat model of it. Here are some screenshots of companies and projects that use Intel SJX. As is shown here, the widely adopted threat model consider OS, owner, infrastructure are untrusted. A blog, blog post written by Intel employee also says SGX should also protect the code and data inside it from attacker who has physical control of the platform. There were a lot of underwater attacks focusing on TEEs. One of them is Blood Vault, which focusing on using software-based fault injection to attack SJX. And on the right is a diagram that shows the layout of the CPU and uh, the connection of it between the voltage generator. So as you can see here, uh, in the CPU, there is a proportion of calls in untrusted, and, and we also have a secure enclave, which is uh, SGX. So in plot world, they found that there is a memory register, which is MSR150, which can allow you to control the voltage of the CPU. So they can run their uh, attack code in the untrusted environment and uh, write to the, this register, so the CPU voltage will change. We, we later we found that this is because after writing to these registers, the CPU will send command to an external voltage regulator. So they were able to use this um, voltage fault injection to fault multiplication, RSA and ASNI in SGX and also cause memory corruption. After Blood Vault attack is discovered, Intel quickly published a security advisory and disabled its software interface. However, there is still a physical connection between the CPU and the voltage regulator. So we start to think maybe we can take control of this physical connection and then maybe we can then take over the voltage regulator to change the voltage of the CPU. So we start to look into this uh, interface. From just Intel CPU datasheet, we found that this physical interface is called SVID bus. It's a three-wire interface which has clock data and alert, and alert is not required in the actual implementation. And the clock frequency is 25 MHz. The operating voltage of it is between 0 volt and 1 volt. Started our journey with SVID bus. The first thing we need to do in order to inject packets to SVID bus is to find where it is. We firstly find the voltage regulator on the motherboard, on, as it's shown at here, the chip is actually next to a uh, large capacitors around the CPU. Then the next sensible step in order to know more information about this interface would be finding the datasheet of it. So I search for this chip according to its part number. But the only information we can find is uh, is a data shot from its official website. At first, we thought it's a typo, but after opening it, we know why it's, it's called data shot. It's only one A4 page long and gives no information about this interface. So the only option left left to us in order to locate this bus and uh, find more information about the protocol is to do some probing and reverse engineering. So I picked up a syscope to check all the registers around this voltage regulator. Until this signal shows up on screen. There is a 25 microns clock and data. Also, they operate between 0 volt and 1 volt, which matched exactly to the spec we know for the SVID bus. Here are the two, pin, two pins we found. Actually, um, there are two test points left by the motherboard manufacturer for these two wires. With the help of a screenshot of logic analyzer and some testing, 
we reverse engineered the SVID protocol. Here shows the complete SVID protocol as far as we know. On the left shows the SVID signal and data frame. It has a few bit indicating the start and the end of the frame, and there are four bit indicating the address, five bit for commands, four bits for VID and the party bit. On the right shows how VID is calculated and some VID commands we discovered. The most useful command for this project is uh, this one, set to VID fast. We are using this command to change the voltage. So then we start to get our hands dirty and do some uh, micro soldering. We soldered two wires out of this interface to a bus driver and then connected it to a TNZ 4.0. This is because the SVID bus operates under one watt logic, but the micro internal ways we use can only output signal in 3.3 .3 logic level. We also build what is firmware for TNZ with a modified SBI driver. In order to control the timing of the voltage change, we implemented the trigger functionality using GPIO pins and USB serial connection. After receiving the trigger signal, TNZ will inject SVID packets to change the CPU voltage. It's worth mentioning that our tool can be built with only $30. So then let's start to inject some faults. Uh, to make things easier, we created a library for end voting. Here, the configure glitch with delay function will send configuration to the vault pillager and arm the trigger. Then the trigger set will send the trigger to activate the glitch, and uh, the trigger reset will reset the trigger. We tested all of the proof concept of plant vault, and uh, we were able to uh, reproduce all of them. Furthermore, we are able to fault MVDT, TLS, ASNI, and Open Enclave File Encryptor. We also found a new type of fault, which is delayed write fault. Here is a demo for faulting open enclave file encryptor. On the top uh, is our live stream of the Cisco. We have a uh, voltage dis displayed at here. Uh, it's a CPU voltage. And uh, we have trigger and SVID clock and data signal. Then we run the encryption operation for several times uh, while doing voltage glitching. And um, as you can see here, uh, after sending the SVID commands, we have a voltage drop. And after sending another one, uh, we have a voltage recovery. After a few attempts, we successfully injected a fault. You can see it here. Um, then this fault can be analyzed using different drop fault and analyzed to recover the key. As said earlier, another new type of fault we found using what leader is delayed write fault. Let's have a look at this code. We firstly set all prompt one and all prompt two to have the same value. And then we keep increasing both of them and check if they still have the same value in your type loop. If the calculation is correct, this line of code should never get executed. However, with fault injection, we found that sometimes this variable named faulty is set to 1. To investigate more, we look into the disassembly of the code, and we think this is because uh, one of these two add instructions were not committed when the compiler happens. So when the execution reaches the compiler operation, they are holding different values. This is a new type of fault observed using what leader. And later we did further investigation with software and voting, and found that this fault can cause auto found underflow and overflow of the array. On the left shows our demo code. Uh, if this code calculates correctly, it should all only all write to element 4, 3, 2, 1. But uh, in, during some fault, uh, we found that it actually uh, read to element zero, and sometimes it's even uh, read to element five and more. 
This video shows the auto found uh, underflow and overflow. <laughs> and this is the uh, target code we want to inject port. Uh, normally, it should only write to 4321. And we gradually lower the voltage. Um, and the element at index 0 is already. And here shows uh, that we can also cause array overflow. Element at 5, 6, 7, 8 were overwritten. After we found this vulnerability, we reported it to Intel on 13th March 2020. And here is Intel's reply. They consider opening the case and tampering of internal hardware is out of SCX threat model. However, as we talked earlier, the threat model of DEs clearly said that it should protect against attacker who has control of the platform, such as infrastructure provider. And this threat model is widely adopted in the community. So maybe we need to rethink of this threat model of SCX. Can it still protect against such attacks? In summary, what bigger is the first hardware-based unvolting against Intel CPUs, and it can bypass the mitigation implemented for plant vault. Uh, we also discovered a new type of port, which is delayed write port, uh, with it. And it's a budget tool, uh, which can be built with only $30. With our findings, we should rethink of Intel SCX threat model. Can it still protect SCX from attackers who has control of the hardware? That's all for our pleasure. Thank you for listening. You can find more information on this uh, website.